I scheduled the meetup, I scheduled first class, and uh, we got the traction right away. Really cool though, I like it. The expression girl code has a different meaning for the members of girl development. The national nonprofit is working hard to close the gender gap in technology. I always been, you know, kind of tech a kid. I was, you know, one of those kids that plugs all the VHS at home and, you know, assembles computers. Lena Levine founded the group's Buffalo chapter nearly yeah. two years ago. From beginner to advanced, its workshops are almost always sold out. The classes are in depth, and Girl Development offers scholarships to help make them more affordable. STEM like HTML, CSS, intro to the web concepts, intro to JavaScript, so all the uh, basics that you need for pretty much any coding um, job. We have had um, uh, one lady get a job as a junior programmer, so. Yeah. More women are adding terms like coder and game developer to their resumes. Last year, women made up 22% of the game developer workforce. That was double the 11.5% of females in the field in 2009. That says we've made progress, but we still have a long way to go. A very long way to go. Now, the number of women who actually play games is 50%. Eloise Oizan oh, has fantastic. taught all things game design and development for the last 15 years at Rochester Institute of Technology. And every year, she makes it a point to try and encourage more female students to get in the game. If we have women who come in, if we have people of color who come in and make games, they will make games that appeal to them, and that sort of broadens the conversation. I didn't even know what technology was. No idea. As a kid living in Colombia, South America, back in the 90s, Elizabeth Canis had zero exposure to computers and software. But through the years, technology as she knew it became less scary. When I decided I needed to choose a career, I'm like, I'm going to be a programmer. <laughs> what I thought programming was, was um, learning Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, PowerPoint. I would say, I'm going to be an expert programming programmer in these programs. So my first programming class, I almost had a stroke. Canis grew up in New York City, and she says back then, computer classes weren't a thing until high school, if you were lucky. Nowadays, she lives upstate, and says when she hooked up with Girl Develop It, there was no turning yeah, 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 yeah. back. Number one, I learned that I was capable, because at a certain point, I, I felt that maybe I, I was too far behind and I was never going to be able to catch up and perhaps technology wasn't going to be a career path for me. There's a massive video game archive at Rochester's Strong Museum. In fact, it's the world's largest collection. Some of the most compelling, interesting games now, a movement called Indie Games, many of those developers are women who are working on those as well. And it's a fresh voice and a sign of a maturing industry. Oizan remembers a time when breaking into the industry as a woman felt impossible. She says those barriers helped her develop a tough skin. The first woman in the situation, the first brown person in this situation, and all of a sudden you have to be not just competent, you have to be more than competent, you have to be super adjective. It is in that context because you're representing everybody else. Time to get some work done. <laughs> The women of Girl Develop It say they have more classes on coding, gaming, and mobile apps in the works. And they're pumped about hosting a second hackathon in the spring. But more than anything, the group is optimistic and say women will eventually reach parity with men when it comes to technology. I think so. I think it's just we started later because we didn't have interest earlier. 